Yu-Gi-Oh players. Creatures as wondrous as they are mysterious. For too long we have been left in the dark about their habits and ways of life. But today, we get an exclusive look at these magnificent creatures in the Duelist Kingdom. Look there, it's the Traitus Horus, a very meek and skittish type of player. Look at how it avoids the approach of a predator and then puts his back to him to protect his treasures. They are said to have all manner of rare cards within their trade binders. However, an actual trade with one has never been recorded. I wonder why I show up with binders at all. The ruler Sharkus is a temperamental beast. He watches his opponent like a hawk, waiting for the first opportunity to strike and derail the game. His hand speed is known to move over 70 miles per hour. It's best not to approach when he gets like this and leave it to a professional. Now he meets the judge head on over his opponent's protest. It seems his anger got the better of him, and now he's trying a reconciliatory approach. But the judges and opponent have had enough. The most egotistical member of the Duelist Kingdom, the Trius Hardest may as well be playing by himself. No matter who he is playing or what deck they use, he will play meta. Like the Ruler Sharkus, this creature is best avoided. And if a Ruler Sharkus and a Trius Hardest ever meet, God help us all. If that weren't bad enough, the Trias Hardest takes an uncomfortable amount of pleasure when winning, as if he actually won with skill. Here comes the Yugas Enthusiastus, sporting its winter coat of bags and miscellaneous card supplies. They are a nomadic species that quickly set up their den in any card shop that they enter. The Yugas Enthusiastus sheds his coat to keep other players at a distance and provide a sense of security. But gathering his coat between rounds has caused him to be late for games, resulting in game losses. The slowest place is an enigma of the Duelist Kingdom. It's like if a sloth and a tortoise who beat the hare had a baby. No one is quite sure if he knows what he's doing or if he's acting on instinct. He shuffles slower and slower and... <laughs> when his opponent makes a move, he springs his trap. He pauses for a response, but he just sits there, shuffling those cards. He has stopped his opponent's play to burn even more time off the clock. This is sickening to watch. His opponent is helpless as time runs out on their match, and he's right where the slowest players wants him. The Funkus Smellus are pretty common in most populations. They are good natured and very fr. <laughs> oh, what is. <coughs> oh my god, it's so much worse than I expected. <sighs> they are the most friendly species of player to our detriment because they emit an odor so foul it'll knock the hair off a of Karibo. Ah, oh, I can still taste it. Enter the Duelist Otakus, affectionately known as the Anime Duelist. Backed by the harder cards and an extensive knowledge of the anime, you'd think he was a master duelist. In practice, the Duelist Otakus doesn't understand any rule that conflicts with the anime. He doesn't really keep up with the game outside of catching the subbed episodes and reading the weekly manga. Mid-game, he's either getting his game on, getting revved up, or feeling the flow. It can be very difficult to argue with the anime duelists. Their rulings come from Season 2, Episode 6, like Timestamp, whatever. The Duelist Otakus may not always win, but when he does lose, he is sure to go out in character. A parasite of the Duelist Kingdom, the Duelist Baxetus leeches onto a host and proceeds to suck the fun out of any duel. When confronted, the Duelist Baxetus does not admit fault and insists that giving advice is not illegal. It's getting to the point that he's making even more decisions than the players are. Even so, no one has ever seen him duel alone before, but he's told us that he has topped several regionals and is the best player at the shop. 
Over there are the Meta Ovis Ares, or the Herding Duelists. In order to survive the harsh environment of the Duelist Kingdom, they have forsaken individual thought for a communal life. These duelists make nearly all decisions based off of what's popular or successful. They are not loyal to any one deck or playstyle, and will drop a deck as soon as a more powerful one arises. Not everyone who plays Meta is a member of this species, but you can tell when you're dealing with them. The YogiTuber is on a never-ending search for content, I mean food. He uses deck profiles as nourishment, but is unable to create them himself, so he must rely on others. He can be found anywhere that duelists gather, and will relentlessly pursue winning an interesting decklist, regardless of how willing the player is. Join us next time where we will investigate the grazing habits of Yu-Gi-Oh players. Is that grass really greener?